In the previous video, we started our discussion of third generation concepts. These concepts are novel approaches that aim to go beyond the shock leak wiser limit by challenging the assumptions upon which this limit is based. We discussed how intermediate band solar cells and spectral upconversion tackle the assumption that sub band gap photons cannot lead to charge carrier generation. The next assumption of the shock leak wiser limit is that photons with an energy much greater than the band gap energy can only excite a single electron hole pair. Spectral down conversion and multiple exciton generation are two concepts that challenge this assumption. The idea of spectral down conversion is to use an additional layer to split one high energy photon into multiple low energy photons. A high energy photon is absorbed at the front of the solar cell and converted into at least two photons with lower energy. If the energy of this initial photon is more than twice the band gap energy, both photons can generate an electron hole pair. This means that the maximum theoretical external quantum efficiency of 100% at the wavelength of a blue photon can be increased to 200%. If the photon had high enough energy to be split into three photons with sufficient energy, a theoretical external quantum efficiency of 300% could be obtained. In contrast to upconversion, a downconverting layer has to be at the front of the solar cell as highly energetic photons have a high absorption probability and are therefore quickly absorbed in the absorber layer. Because of the required placement at the front of the cell, parasitic absorption might be a problem in this technology. Just as with other third generation concepts, quantum dots can be used for spectral downconversion. If quantum dots were to be used for downconversion, an ensemble of nanoparticles would be embedded in a host material, in a very close proximity to one another. The figure shows two silicon quantum dots and their respective band diagrams. Now, a high energy photon is absorbed by quantum dot 1, resulting in an electron being excited high into the conduction band. In contrast to a bulk semiconductor, the excess energy of the photon is not necessarily lost as heat, but can be transferred as a quantized energy package to a neighboring quantum dot. Here, a second electron is excited into the conduction band of the second dot. As a result, two electron hole pairs have been created out of one photon. If non-radiative recombination mechanisms like Auger recombination and shockley reed hole recombination are sufficiently suppressed, the electron hole pairs in both quantum dots can radiatively recombine such that each of the two dots emits one reddish photon. As such, one instant bluish photon is converted in two reddish photons, which can be absorbed by a PV material. Another approach to enhance the charge carrier excitation by a single highly energetic photon is called multi-exciton generation. Like with spectral downconversion, multiple exciton generation can be realized with quantum dots. Again, a high energy photon excites an electron high into the conduction band of the first quantum dot. Instead of being lost as heat, the excess energy is again transferred to a neighboring dot. In the second particle, another electron is excited into the conduction band. Now, however, the charge carriers of the two excitons are separated and transported to the PV active layers before they can recombine. Therefore, in contrast to spectral downconversion, two or more excitons are generated rather than two lower energy photons. Consequently, one incident photon results in more than one generated electron. The final assumption we will discuss is that any photon energy above the band gap is lost due to thermal relaxation. Even if more than one electron hole pair is generated by a single high energy photon, most photons will not have an exact multiple of the band gap energy 
and therefore thermal relaxation will still occur. Hot karyosolar cells focus on reducing the thermalization energy loss. In hot carrier solar cells, this is attempted by collecting high energy electron hole pairs just after light excitation and before they have the chance to relax back to the edges of the electronic bands. The figure shows the band diagram of such a solar cell. Under influence of light, a large number of electron hole pairs are generated. These curves show the population of electrons in the conduction band and holes in the valence band just after excitation. This distribution is not in thermal equilibrium as many electrons are excited into a position further up the conduction band and the holes are excited down to lower levels in the valence band. These charge carriers are called hot electrons and hot holes. It only takes a few picoseconds for the hot charge carriers to relax back to the edges of the electronic bands. The idea of hot carrier cells is to collect the charge carriers as long as they are still hot. Hot carrier solar cells require selective contacts, which only collect electrons above a particular energy level in the conduction band and holes below a certain energy level in the valence band. As such, a larger energy can be utilized per excited charge carrier, as indicated by the Q times V. The average energy of the collected charge carriers would therefore exceed the band gap energy. At the moment, the main challenge is to increase the lifetime of the hot charge carriers such that they have the time to move from the absorber material to the selective contacts. So, these are the third generation concepts that challenge the fundamental assumption upon which the shockley quiser limit is based. Note that beside multi-junction and the concentrator approach, none of these concepts have yet resulted in high efficiency solar cells. These other concepts are still in the fundamental research phase. It still has to be seen whether these concepts can be realized in real practical photovoltaic devices and modules. With this last video, we conclude the course Photovoltaic Energy Conversion. I hope this course has helped you to understand the fundamentals of photovoltaic solar energy conversion. In the last video, we discussed third generation concepts of photovoltaic technology. In the next course, entitled Photovoltaic Technology, we will discuss the wide variety of existing photovoltaic technologies. The knowledge of the photovoltaic energy conversion course will act as a basis to understand the design concept of the various PV technologies. We will discuss the fabrication processes of the PV technologies used by industry. Finally, we will discuss the advantages, limitations and future challenges of all these photovoltaic technologies. I hope to see you back in the next course of the MicroMasters on Solar Energy Engineering.